What can I say? Good morning to you, especially to the president and national executives of the Ghana Institute of Architects, to all collaborating agencies, to members of the Institute, friends from the media, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure this morning to welcome you to the Kofi Annan ICT Center in Bridge Accra as the whole family and body of the Ghana Institute of Architects comes together to collaborate and deliberate and do a lot of soul searching and deep thinking in looking ahead to yet another year that will present its own challenges in terms of our development as a nation. The Ghana Institute of Architects with its rich history has surely given proof as a major element of our development as a nation, meaning that without this particular institution within the framework of our national development, our development is never possible. This morning, I'm grateful and glad to be in your company, and it is my hope that together we will have a successful set of deliberations and look ahead to a very positive year ahead. By way of introduction, my name is Nathaniel Atto, and I will be your master of ceremonies for today. It's my hope that together, we will enjoy each other's company and we'll see a successful end to this annual general meeting. I believe that our gathering here this morning is the doing of the good Lord, considering that this profession is one of the oldest when it comes to God's creation. It's my greatest pleasure to warmly welcome here to the microphone and to the stage, architect Freeman Agbabanye to help us with a word of prayer. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Thank you, MC. Shall we be upstanding? Father God Almighty, we have come once again before thy throne of grace to ask for your favor and your presence for this occasion, for today and the days ahead, that you take absolute control over the operations and the deliberations we will go through. We also ask that you drain into our souls and our minds the various ideas and solutions that our country needs most as we go ahead in this life. We commit every member here, those on the way coming, and the uh, uh, council in entirety that you will grant us the grace and protection. And we are grateful for this day. We are so grateful for this occasion. We are so grateful for how far you have brought us, Lord. We we'll do it together and let's all say amen. amen. Thank you. And we're also very grateful to architect uh, Freeman Agbomanye for that prayer. Shall we put our hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> this morning, I'd like to express massive gratitude to our friends who have decided to be a part of this in a unique way through sponsorship. We duly acknowledge the very kind support of our platinum sponsor, Stone Depot, whom we'll be listening to later on. Shall we put our hands together in appreciation? <laughs> We also duly acknowledge the very kind support of X Interior Designs, who are diamond sponsors for this event. Shall we put our hands together? <laughs> and to our gold sponsors as well, we say a very massive and big thank you. DBS Industries Limited, Giorita Limited, and Sika Chemicals Ghana Limited. Please put your hands together. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Next is the official welcome which will be delivered by the president of the Ghana Institute of Architects. A seasoned gentleman in this profession who has had his work spread across the country. Well, um, in terms of our geographical location, it's not too difficult to locate some uh, elements of his work. Now a profession and a career which has spanned a minimum of two to three decades has seen him grow from one stage to the other when it comes to architecture and creativity within this space. We always would like to refer to big edifices, including the Carl Bank head office, which is just a stone's throw from here, and the Elizabeth, which is an uh, airport residential area, as well as many other massive developments, some of which are known and also unknown. But he always brims with a lot of passion, especially when it comes to the forward movement of the Ghana Institute of Architects. And it's not by no accident that he currently leads as president. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome 
the locally respected and internationally acclaimed architect S.M. Korte, president of the Ghana Institute of Architects. Nathaniel, you have a way of introducing a person that can make you wonder whether it's you they are talking about. <laughs> so I was sitting there, I said, wow, is that me? Okay. Thank you very much, Nathaniel. Um, it's a pleasure to be here this morning. I recognize that in the last two years, due to the pandemic, it's been impossible to have an in-person AGM. We've had to resort to online meetings, and today, by the grace of God, it's possible for us to meet here. Um, a friend of mine said in the last two years, things that we hitherto thought that it could not be done online have been done online, except for still some few things which cannot be done online. And I said, which are these few things? I mean, what are you thinking? <laughs> I mean, you can't eat online, you know, yeah. <laughs> you have to meet in person. I was looking forward to having the presence of the Honorable Minister for Works and Housing here. In fact, he's shown to be a good friend of this institute, and we are trying to wait for his presence because he's actually said that he would want to join us. Unfortunately, he's not still here with us, so we'll start, but I'll recognize as if he's here, the Honorable Minister for Works and Housing. This morning, we are pleased to have here past presidents of the institutes, and I'm happy to mention their names here. I see um, past president Richard Dade here. I see past president Theosowa. I see past president Niteko. Yeah, please put your hands together. It's a joy to have these people here. I'm humbled to have in our presence here fellows of the institute, um, fellows, um, Uncle um, Abiesi, I, I said to him and then architect here that if I hadn't seen them here, I would have to call them to check if they are not well. Such has been their support for the Institute. Please put your hands together. It's a joy to have you here. We have distinguished council members of the ARC who are board members of the ARC who are here. We're happy to have you here. We have sister institutions which are represented here from the Institution of Surveyors, President, it's a pleasure to have you here from the Institution of Engineering. It's a pleasure to have you here. Such has been the support you have shown to the Ghana Institute of Architects. We believe that before the end of the day, we'll have the institution from Planners as well joining us here. Um, I need to mention this. That gives me a great joy that we have, for the first time with the Ghana Institute of Architects in public, we have the registrar of the ARC. Dr. Eyaboche, um, we met here, I think about three years ago, to vote him as uh, members of the Ghana Institute of Architects. It had been a long journey, and today is a joy to have him in person, in position, as a registrar of the, Gan of the Architects Registration Council. And I need to mention that in his absence, or when he hadn't taken over, that the position and had been held very well and efficiently by architect Josephine. Josephine, it's a pleasure to have you here as well. We have other fellows present like uh, Senor Tete. I see here, which other fellows? I shouldn't forget, I mean, this position of, oh, pro Prof, I recognize him in many folds as a board member of ARC, as a fellow, as, is he the only professor here? I think he's the only professor. <laughs> prof, it's a joy to have you here. Our distinguished and very special guest speaker, whom I'll choose not to mention his name until he's properly introduced, but uh, we, we are happy to have you in our presence here. And then fellow architects, it's a joy to have Please lend us support. We are kind of, it's a fraternity. Our platinum sponsors, Stone Depot. Our diamond sponsors, X Interior Design. Our gold sponsors, DBS Industries Limited. Sika Chemicals Limited, Jurita Limited. We thank you and it's a pleasure to have you here as our sponsors for this AGM. I would like to say that this AGM is a really special one, not only because it's the first in the last two years or three years to be a fiscal one, 
uh, the theme that we are about to discuss is one that um, you would learn a lot from. To talk about architecture yesterday or the past, today and the future is really profound. For many of us to understand why we are seeing the kind of buildings we are seeing, why our architectural space is what it is today, you need to understand yesterday. You need to understand the history. You need to understand where it all started from. Now, to better make decisions about tomorrow, you need to understand what is going on today. Over the next two days, we have very enlightened speakers who have prepared to come and speak to us on these issues. You will learn a lot. I encourage you, if you're an architect who is listening online, who is physically present, invite another architect. Invite two, invite three. Let's all learn from this. I'm concerned particularly about tomorrow. I take it that it's this kind of discussion that can help us to make better decisions about tomorrow. When you understand what it is today, how today came about by talking about yesterday, then you'll be best prepared for tomorrow. As well, sponsors will be presenting to us. And this particular AGM is one that we are going to have also election, and then we are going to have coming into power new executives. I urge all of us to be present. I wish that um, tomorrow we'll have more like a triple the number of the people we have here. So um, my pleasure to welcome you once again. Let's have a beautiful time. Let's interact with one another. AGM is meant to move the organization forward. It's also meant to fraternize. So after the session, let's not be in such a hurry to leave. Let's interact with one another and then discuss about this, our profession. Nathaniel, I believe that I've duly welcomed you all to this year's AGM. Thank you very much. Well said, our president. Ladies and gentlemen, let's appreciate him with a bigger round of applause. Well, very striking thoughts from the president of the Ghana Institute of Architects, considering the conversations that we'll be having and the topics that will be treated over the next few days. I um, have the privilege of visiting Cairo, which obviously is a very historic uh, city when it comes to historic relevance, um, you know, here on the African continent and the world for that matter. And um, we also had the privilege of visiting the pyramids as usual. And we visited some buildings that were thousands of years old. And as the president was making his remarks, it just struck me about what our forefathers thought back in the time when they were constructing, uh, the precision with which they did what they did, and the considerations that generations on, people will come and benefit from all of these edifices that were put up. So in the same way, it's a great time that you, the technocrats, have come together and are looking forward and moving ahead with the times, especially considering how fast our nation Ghana is moving uh, within the relevance of the West African sub-region and Africa for that matter. Ghana, let's all remember, is being positioned as the center of the world, which it is um, in terms of geography, but it's also supposed to be the center of the world when it comes to tourism and when it comes to trade and many other aspects of our development. And I believe that these are the conversations that start off that general call for all other sectors to come together and make this work. We're very grateful to you once again, Mr. President. I also want to duly acknowledge uh, some sector agencies who are, or collaborative agencies who are also here with us, bringing us a lot of love from the Ghana Institution of Surveyors is the President. Rose Margaret Isubonting, shall we put our hands together? We're very grateful to you. And of course, as we go along, we'll be acknowledging individuals and persons who have uh, come uh, to collaborate and support this AGM this year. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we've mentioned our sponsors, and it's just right that we introduce you to them in an audio-visual way. Please focus on the screen above as we say a symbolic thank you to all of our sponsors.
Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, shall we say thank you with a round of applause to all of our sponsors. Next to give a message of goodwill and solidarity is a man whom I've known for many years. A seasoned architect without a doubt whose work is out there for all to see. Of all his very sterling credentials, I believe that one of the key things that most of us would appreciate him for was amongst many to contribute effectively and adequately to a process that led to the construction of Ghana's first infectious disease center. Personally, I've known him for so many years, as I've said, and he's one of the people who's had to be on the listening end of my presentations as a conference moderator, a professional master of ceremony, and a journalist. It's also great to note that he leads the direction at the Architects Registration Council as its chair. He's also an immediate past president of the Ghana Institute of Architects. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, with a big round of applause, please help me welcome architect Richard Nidade. So thank you very much for that brief introduction. President Quote, thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to share a few words with you on this memorable location. Uh, I'd like to extend my appreciation to Professor Wellington, Emeritus Professor, who has indeed tutored and mentored a lot of us here. There's also uh, Uncle Jeff, who has been acknowledged already, Uncle Theo, um, then Senor, my senior. So I'd also like to welcome you. And then also, the colleague members of the governing board of the ARC, <coughs> council members of the Ghana Institute of Architects, uh, past president Lee Teko of Ansan who for some reason has decided to sit at the back and even though he is supposed to be here at the front, uh, Albert William Debord Viala, you're welcome, and also Rosemary Esubonting, and also Delilah Mesa from the Institute of <coughs> Interior Designers of Ghana. Yeah, okay. Um, we'd like to extend our greetings to the architectural fraternity on this special occasion. Uh, it is unique in that both the regulator and the regulator regulated are turning a new page. On the one hand, the GIA is in the process of electing a new team which will steer the affairs of the body for the next two years, and we congratulate you on this. In the case of your regulator, the ARC, we have finally arrived at the stage where the governing board is fully constituted as required by Act 357, the representation from the Ministry of Works and Housing and the Attorney General's Department. Now, the icing on the cake is the appointment of Dr. Emmanuel Iyabotri as a registrar. Yes. Emmanuel has worked previously, has previously served as a vice president of the GIA, so he's not a new person uh, to us. Now, he comes to the table impeccable academic qualification of a master's in construction man project management and a PhD in engineering management, in addition to his proven skills of, in administration and management. Before joining us, he was a senior lecturer at the Kumasi Technical University. It is significant, as I've said, that he is uh, assuming this role in tandem with the swearing in of the new GIA Council. This certainly offers to all of us unparalleled opportunities to both regulator and the professional body to mutually work together to chart 
new paths in the development of our noble profession. We look forward to exciting, relevant, and purposeful collaboration between the ARC and the GIE. As regards the ARC, on the top of our to-do list is the provision of input to the review of the Architect Act, which has been long outstanding. And we intend to foster intense collaboration between the GIE and the ARC so that we provide inputs which reflect the exigencies of successful practice. Another area which the ARC will be focusing on, and I've had discussions with the new registrar, is sanitizing illegal practice by persons not registered to practice. And we'll need the cooperation of the GIA in able to do this. Um, I'll just have a few words to say. The main thing I'd like to add to all this is that um, a topical issue that is in discussion now is the perennial flooding, cyclical flooding of Accra. Every year we talk about it, and I think it is time that as architects and key players in the built environment profession, we team up with the hydro specialists, drainage engineers, sanitation engineers, and the various submetros to provide holistic and permanent solutions to this perennial menace, which brings in its wake loss of, needless loss of property and lives. This, every year, we say the same thing. But let's look at it. Look at it in terms of the engineering aspect. Look at it in terms of the planning aspect. Look at it in terms of sanitation, education, advocacy, and education of persons, so that uh, together we can come out with solutions that will put a definite stop to, to this perennial uh, flooding. I believe as we go on with our deliberations, a few more things will be said about this issue. But for now, I leave you with uh, that. And thank you very much for your attention. And I wish you successful deliberations. We can do a bigger round of applause for the council chair. Thank you very much, sir. And of course, we also like to say a very big thank you to him and continue to give him a lot more energy as he advocates for standards to be established. Very, very important as we move along. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I would like to acknowledge the presence of the president-elect of the Ghana Institution of Engineers, Engineer Kwabna Bimpong. Please put your hands together. On a lighter note, please make sure to invite all of us to your, you know, your investiture. <laughs> please put your hands together for him one more time. Also bringing us massive support from the Interior Designers and Decorators Association, the President, Delilah Mercer. Please put your hands together. We're also grateful to have support from the Ghana Standards Authority, Mr. Clifford Frempong as representing the Standards Authority. Thank you very much, sir. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to bring you an audiovisual clip that will introduce us and get us closer to our platinum sponsor, Stone Depot. Welcome to Stone Depot, Ghana's most trusted in natural stone, custom fabrication, and distribution. We produce from premium quality marble, granite and quartz slabs procured from around the world. Stone Depot is also proud to be the official distributor of Cosentino products in Ghana, Southstone Quartz, and Dexton Ultra Compact Surfaces. Our factory in Accra is geared with state-of-the-art machinery and professionals who can assist in customizing different stone shapes and sizes to suit your unique needs. We fabricate and install your unique measurements and templates exactly as you want them. Our professionals have mastered this age-old trade and guarantee the precision, quality, and beauty your project deserves. Between 2019 and 2020, we've supplied the Ghanaian market with 24,000 square meters of natural stone and created over 100 new jobs. 
Over the years, and with thousands of satisfied clients, Stone Depot has placed itself as the most trusted natural stone fabricator in Ghana. Our professionalism is displayed in works such as the Signature Building, the African Region Hotel, the National Memorial Monument for the late Jerry John Rawlings, the Tribute Memorial Statue for the late Major Mahama, Imperial Homes, and Clifton Homes. At Stone Depot, we are always one step ahead when it comes to innovative trends and technological advances in the natural stone fabrication market. We were first to recently embark on the development of epoxy resin based terrazzo slabs. We invite you to discover the endless possibilities that we have to offer for all your upcoming projects. Welcome to Stone Depot, Ghana's most trusted in natural stone, custom fabrication, and distribution. We produce from premium quality marble, granite, and quartz slabs procured from around the world. Stone Depot is also proud to be the official distributor of Cosentino products in Ghana, Southstone Quartz, and Dexon Ultra Compact Surfaces. Our factory in Accra is geared with state-of-the-art machinery and professionals who can assist in customizing different stone shapes and sizes to suit your unique needs. We fabricate and install your unique measurements and templates exactly as you want them. Our professionals have mastered this age-old trade and guarantee the precision, quality, and beauty your project deserves. Between 2019 and 2020, we've supplied the Ghanaian market with 24,000 square meters of natural stone and created over 100 new jobs. Over the years, and with thousands of satisfied clients, Stone Depot has placed itself as the most trusted natural stone fabricator in Ghana. Our professionalism is displayed in works such as the Signature Building, the African Region Hotel, the National Memorial Monument for the late Jerry John Rawlings, the Tribute Memorial Statue for the late Major Mahama, Imperial Homes, and Clifton Homes. At Stone Depot, we are always one step ahead when it comes to innovative trends and technological advances in the natural stone fabrication market. We were first to recently embark on the development of epoxy resin based terrazzo slabs. We invite you to discover the endless possibilities that we have to offer for all your upcoming projects. Welcome to Stone Depot, Ghana's most trusted in natural stone, custom fabrication, and distribution. We produce from premium quality marble, 
granite, and quartz slabs procured from around the world. Stone Depot is also proud to be the official distributor of Cosentino products in Ghana, Southstone Quartz, and Decton Ultra Compact Surfaces. Our factory in Accra is geared with state-of-the-art machinery and professionals who can assist in customizing different stone shapes and sizes to suit your unique needs. We fabricate and install your unique measurements and templates exactly as you want them. Our professionals have mastered this age-old trade and guaranteed the precision, quality, and beauty your project deserves. Between 2019 and 2020, we've supplied the Ghanaian market with 24,000 square meters of natural stone and created over 100 new jobs. Over the years, and with thousands of satisfied clients, Stone Depot has placed itself as the most trusted natural stone fabricator in Ghana. Our professionalism is displayed in works such as the Signature Building, the African Regent Hotel, the National Memorial Monument for the late Jerry John Rawlings, the Tribute Memorial Statue for the late Major Mahama, Imperial Homes, and Clifton Homes. At Stone Depot, we are always one step ahead when it comes to innovative trends and technological advances in the natural stone fabrication market. We were first to recently embark on the development of epoxy resin based terrazzo slabs. We invite you to discover the endless possibilities that we have to offer for all your upcoming projects. Thank you very much, and we say a very big thank you once again to Stone Depot, our platinum sponsor for this 2022 annual general meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, it gives me great pleasure to welcome here for a special message, the registrar of the Architects Registration Council. With a big round of applause, please help me welcome Dr. Emmanuel Eya Boutre. Thank you very much. Good morning. I believe that it's a great pleasure to be here this morning. I've always desired to be at AGMs of the GIA but today I'm not here just as an associate member, but then as the registrar of the Actate Registration Council. Applause. 
the board chairman, Actate Registration Council, members of the board present, president and then council, members of the Actate Registration Council of the Ghana Institute of Architects, and then representatives of the allied professionals, bodies present, invited guests, and colleague actors present, not forgetting friends of the media that are around. I'm exceedingly glad to be in your midst this morning, as I've already said, as the registrar of the Acted Registration Council. But first of all, I would like to express my gratitude to the President of Ghana, His Excellency, Nanado Dankwa Ekufuado, for accepting my nomination and subsequently appointing me as the Registrar of the Actors Registration Council. I also want to thank the Honorable Minister, who is now in our midst, Honorable Francis Asensubwache. I have had the privilege to visit him, and I was so much glad he warmly welcomed us, and we had a very fruitful discussion on the way forward for the ARC. I also want to take this opportunity to thank all the members of the ARC Council. I've seen Prof. Wellington. Let me mention this. I remember very well that when I was in first year, I got a bit disappointed at the end of the first semester because I'd wanted to do medicine. Um, I think I came to the first year with grades A, A, B. I, I was purely a science student. And then at the end of the first semester, I think that studio work, I didn't do too well. Early in the morning, I went to Prof. Wellington's house. I was weeping. I went to tell him that I wanted to stop architecture because I thought that I wasn't going to make it. I really wanted to finish with the first class. But first year, first semester, studio work, it wasn't too impressive. And I remember the encouragement. Prof. Wellington, I'm so much grateful. And to the board chair, to the members of the board, and to colleague actors, I would like to say a big thank you also for your election, for the nomination, and for keeping faith with me for almost the past two years. It's not been very easy when you've been nominated and then colleague actors keep on asking you, when are you assuming office? Acted Boche, are you in Accra? And then I'm not too sure what to tell them. But I believe in this scripture that says that there is a time and a season for everything. And I believe that in God's own timing, it has come to pass. I'd like to reiterate the core mandates of the ARC. The mission and vision, which for the next I think four years I'll seek to promote during my term of office. And I'd like to mention that I believe that the office of the registrar is a term of office. And so when my term is over, I'll gladly exit. And I hope that at that time we will have had somebody to take over. The first mandate is to secure the highest cable standards in the practice of architecture. Then to prescribe and approve courses of study for the conduct and standards of qualified examination for registration as a registered architect under the Actors Act 1969. Then to prescribe and uphold standards of professional conduct and ethics to control the practice of architecture. And I want to emphasize this. 
It is not about architects. It's about architecture. And then to maintain and publish a register of architects, I would like to mention a few things. I've been in an office for less than two weeks, but we have touched on almost all these core mandates. On our first mandate, that has to do with securing the highest practicable standards. I've had the privilege to, as I acknowledge the work of my uh, predecessor who acted on behalf of me, acted Josephine, I've had the privilege of visiting the Honorable Minister with her. And we've set the ball rolling. In fact, the Honorable Minister is ready. Uh, he is asking us to quickly bring a position paper on this. My understanding is that if you start a process and the parliamentary section is over and you are not able to complete, you have to start the entire process again. So I want to reassure colleague architects here that we have looked at the position paper for the past two days, and hopefully by the close of week, we are going to resubmit the position paper. I believe that to be able to carry out this mandate, we need to also have Shall we please rise up as we acknowledge the presence of the Honorable Minister, the Minister for Works and Housing. Shall I humbly ask us that please we take our seats? Do I have the permission to continue with my speech? Good, thank you. I think that just as the Honorable Minister was entering the auditorium, I had mentioned that we have started uh, the process of reviewing the acts and that we have his support, and he has actually requested for a position paper, and I'm glad that he's here. I think we should give him the round of applause. In addition to that, I also believe that for us to be able to carry out our mandate very well, we need to look at the necessary legislative instruments to back our mandates. And that is another area that we seek to look at and to make sure that at the end of the day, we'll be able to effectively carry out our mandates. Again, we want to enhance the image of the ARC. I believe that as a regulatory body, uh, if you visit our premises, there isn't much to desire. And again, I would like to say that when we had the privilege to visit the Honorable Minister, he again gave us his support, gave us the direction on what to do to make sure that we enhance the image of the ARC. <clears throat> on our second mandate, that had to do with prescribing courses, etc. We want to approach this by looking at broader issues, including emerging architectural practices, programs, and institutions. Please, I would like to mention that I believe that we all want to support the government to be very successful. And there are a number of things that government policies that have been initiated and I want to encourage members, colleague actors, that please let's all come together, give them their support, and then at the end of the day, I believe we are all going to benefit. For instance, um, as part of the government policy to accelerate infrastructure development, we are looking at 
Programs like architectural technology. And I would like to mention that, for instance, I have been invited as a team leader and I've been involved in the development of a curriculum to, you know, have a CBT program for architectural technologists. Besides that, there is another one that we are looking at for architectural technicians. That means that at the end of the day, we are not only going to have architects to regulate, but then also to have other members to work on. We have had quite a number of things to look at. Every aspect, we intend to work with the Ministry of Local Government, have a collaboration with them. We know that architects are interested in making sure that the right and qualified architects are the ones that are practicing. As my board chairman mentioned, with regard to foreign architects practicing among others, these are all issues that we have looked at. I want to mention in conclusion that I have just assumed office as the registrar, but there are a number of things that we have considered. And I want to reassure you that I am ready to do the best that I can within this period, and I count on your support. Thank you very much. Dr. Emmanuel Eyabuchi, we're very grateful to you. Ladies and gentlemen, shall we appreciate him with a bigger round of applause? At this time, we would also like to duly acknowledge the presence of architect Josephine Pesese, who is the principal assistant registrar of the Architects Registration Council. Please put your hands together. <laughs> Distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, later on, we'll be having some messages of goodwill from some of our collaborative institutions who are here with us. Also, uh, later, when the dinner comes off, we're going to be hearing some more profound messages from all fronts as well. But right now, it gives me great pleasure to welcome up here to the microphone our guest of honor who has given and done his bid when it comes to public service. Of course, as a politician, he has grown through the ranks and has served in various capacities, including serving as a deputy chief of staff. Currently, he's a member of parliament for the very vibrant Bantama constituency, where he's also employing the services of architects to ensure that certain major edifices are put up to face, to give a major facelift to the constituency. And of course, most important among the credentials relevant to our gathering today is his service as minister for Works and Housing. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome our guest of honor, Honorable Francis Asensu Boache. Oh, please, have a seat. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Chairman, President and Council Members of the Ghana Institute of Architects. By the way, is it Ghana Institute of Architects or Ghana Institution of Architects? Institution, Institute. Distinguished Architects, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen. I very much welcome the opportunity given me this morning as the guest of honor for this year's annual general meeting of this noble profession under the theme, Ghanaian architecture, the past, the present, and the future. Indeed, government appreciates the role architects have played in the past and are still playing in providing safe, functional, and attractive habitats within which people live and work towards the socioeconomic growth 
of our country. Occasions like this also present to you as professionals the opportunity to take stock of the profession and see the impact you are making on our society. As the renowned architect, Sir Norman Foster, puts it, as architects, you design for the present with an awareness of the past for the future, which is essentially unknown. This really makes the theme for this year's AGM an appropriate one. In accepting your invitation to be part of this event, given that today is cabinet and I also had an earlier engagement involving the president, and as a planner myself, I was convinced beyond doubt that you are collectively meeting here today as architects to develop a system that will make the role of architecture and planning more functional in ensuring a better and inclusive future for all. This certainly is in line with the Sustainable Development Goals, Goals 9 and 11, that enjoins us to make cities inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. Mr. Chairman, distinguished guests, architecture is visible everywhere. Driving through the city, we experience architecture. Where we are gathered today portrays the beauty of architecture. And it's obvious someone designed it some time ago, some years ago. However, as architects, I believe you know that rapid urbanization and its attendant effects have dominated discussions on human settlement development across the globe over the past few decades. According to the United Nations Population Fund Agency, in 2008, more than half of the world's population lived in cities. Ghana's case is not different from the global phenomenon. As our urban population currently stands at 57%, with an annual urbanization rate of 5.8%. The question that arises Ah, one, how have you as architects embraced this phenomenon in designing buildings and neighborhoods that are inclusive and meet the current urbanization challenges? How have you liaised with other key actors within the built environment space in researching into affordable and sustainable designs that address the needs of all people in society. Mr. Chairman, a week ago, I had the pleasure of paying a courtesy call on the Vice Chancellor of the, and the leadership of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, as well as the leadership of the College of Arts and Built Environment. The main purpose of my visit was to find ways to collaborate with the university and the college towards building a robust and sustainable build, built environment. During our interactions and deliberations, I mentioned that high cost of building materials is one of the striking reasons governments have not been able to provide housing at affordable rates for a significant number of the urban population adding that most of the building materials used in the country are imported. I further notice that the effects of the emergence of COVID-19 and Russia's invasion of Ukraine have taught Ghana a lesson, if not the world, that we cannot continue to rely on imported building materials for our building and construction 
industry. In this regard, I emphasize on the need to develop homegrown solutions to address these challenges and requested for collaborations to research into the right quality local building materials that will help develop the building industry. Additionally, I urge the College of Art and Building Built Environment and the College of Engineering to collaborate with the ministry to develop sustainable planning schemes and architectural designs that will maximize spaces as well as construction methods that will ultimately lead to the reduction in the cost of construction. I wish to extend this invitation to the architect's fraternity to also collaborate with the Ministry of Works and Housing in providing designs and construction methods that will help reduce the cost of construction. Notwithstanding this, ladies and gentlemen, as a sector ministry in charge of the built environment, it is evident that we have the responsibility to create the requisite regulatory regime and environment to create the to ensure the, that buildings are executed to certain standards that serve the needs of everybody in society. It is in light of the foregoing that the ministry, through its relevant stakeholders, finalized, gazetted, and launched the Ghana Building Code in 2018. In a bid to efficiently operationalize the Building Code, it became necessary to review the current building regulations, LI 1630, 1996, to reflect all aspects of the building code. Thankfully, the building regulations is currently before parliament for consideration and approval. My ministry wishes to acknowledge and support the efforts of the Ghana Institute of Architects to address the adverse effects of the built environment. We are prepared to work together with you to continue to bring some sanity into the built environment profession. Likewise, the Architects Registration Council must also be commended for their initiative in regulating the practice of architecture in Ghana. On this note, Mr. Chairman, fellow built environment professionals, I, I wish to continually urge the general public to engage only registered architects and friends for their building projects in order to develop a resilient aesthetically pleasant communities. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you all a fruitful deliberations and may God bless us all. Thank you. Honorable Minister, we're very grateful to you. And what struck me within that address was the call to action for local industry to take over. And the fact that we should have local or homegrown solutions to our problems within the built environment or to our demands within the built environment to help us in terms of pricing and uh, placing value on all of these edif edifices that are put up. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, shall we appreciate the Honorable Minister one more time. Fifi Awatri of the GIA will take over from me very shortly. But right now, I would like all of us to focus on the screens as well as we say a very big symbolic thank you once again to all of our sponsors without whose support we couldn't have put all of this within this AGM together. Thank you. Welcome to Stone Depot, Ghana's most trusted in natural stone, custom fabrication, and distribution. We produce from premium quality marble, granite, and quartz slabs procured from around the world. 
Stone Depot is also proud to be the official distributor of Cosentino products in Ghana, Southstone Quartz, and Decton Ultra Compact Surfaces. Our factory in Accra is geared with state-of-the-art machinery and professionals who can assist in customizing different stone shapes and sizes to suit your unique needs. We fabricate and install your unique measurements and templates exactly as you want them. Our professionals have mastered this age-old trade and guarantee the precision, quality, and beauty your project deserves. Between 2019 and 2020, we've supplied the Ghanaian market with 24,000 square meters of natural stone and created over 100 new jobs. Over the years, and with thousands of satisfied clients, Stone Depot has placed itself as the most trusted natural stone fabricator in Ghana. Our professionalism is displayed in works such as the Signature Building, the African Region Hotel, the National Memorial Monument for the late Jerry John Rawlings, the Tribute Memorial Statue for the late Major Mahama, Imperial Homes, and Clifton Homes. At Stone Depot, we are always one step ahead when it comes to innovative trends and technological advances in the natural stone fabrication market. We are first to recently embark on the development of epoxy resin based terrazzo slabs. We invite you to discover the endless possibilities that we have to offer for all your upcoming projects. DBS <laughs> Empa and Nubina Mepe, Boga, Aya no Cray, Color Link Plus, Aya Material Bia, DBS, Ako Fair Free Europe Abba, Yet the Ball Dance War, Enfedi, GDI Owo Munti, the amount 20 years warranty, 20 years warranty, 20 years warranty. Look, me jam about a new one you, company with a sickle boss, no, Apa, a Fedi, Nasa Color Link Plus Material, we say so. It was self cleansing properties Bia, Insure Ta, Na Aho Krono, Awa Demuswa, Awa Demai, Nu 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 Nu, Say DBS Owo, Sadi Passa Dia, Me. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, I'll be taking over from the MC1. Um, my name is Fifi Sam Awashwe. Shall we have a round of applause for the MC who just left? He's left with such big shoes to fill. <laughs> right, so I'll go straight to the point. I'll be introducing our guest speaker for the day. Um, He's a managing director, a managing consultant for engineering services provision company, ESP Co. He's an experienced engineer with over 26 years experience in the design, construction, and management of numerous challenging and successful landmark projects in Ghana, Nigeria, and Cote d'Ivoire. He's the immediate past president of the Ghana Consulting Engineers Association and a past council member of Ghana Institution of Engineers. He has earned a reputation in the construction industry as a thorough professional with an unyielding commitment for excellence. He has served on entity tender committee of several state-owned enterprises and also a member of the third ad hoc committee on the review of professional fees for the built environment professionals. That's 2020-2022. He is currently a member of the public investment program working construction committee that's PIPWC, affiliated to a, a committee whose mandate is to advise the Minister of Finance on the procurement and management of public investment projects. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest speaker goes by the name Engineer William Disbodis Albert Viala. Let's welcome him with a round of applause. Thank you very much, Fifi. Um, when I entered here, I realized that somehow I've dealt with about 50% of the people. So it, it made me feel at home. <laughs> 
both old and new. The Honorable Minister for Works and Housing, Honorable Francis Asensubwachi, the President, Ghana Institute, Institute of Architects, Mr. S. M. Korti, the executives of GIA and council members, the ARC board chairman, Mr. Richard Nihidade, ARC members, representatives from sister associations, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, I deem it a great pleasure to be part of your annual general meeting today. I want to first of all thank the president, the executives, and the council members, and the entire membership of GIA for inviting me as the guest speaker for this occasion. I'm indeed very humbled and grateful. In fact, I was in Lagos, Nigeria when I received a call that I've been penciled to be the guest speaker. And I asked the president, why, what have you people been planning on my head? <laughs> but I've come to realize that in the discussions we've had over the years, it's important I take on this responsibility and share with you some of the things that affect our profession. I know on a question like this, you're likely to give a speech, but like the minister said, it's more of taking stock of what we've done over the years and how we're going to move forward. And, and going through your brochure, I realized that you mean serious business this year because the activities there is more oriented toward problem solving than business as usual. And I congratulate you for that. I know that if we come in to talk about architecture, I'm not the best person to come speak to you on the past and the present and the future on architecture. You are gurus on your own. You know what to do. But I'm going to try to bring to the fore some kind of things that we have to think about in providing the architecture service for our nation. I remember when I started about some 28 years ago as an engineer doing designs, we designed a structure and to the roof we had a handbook that we use, we called Reynolds. And it gives you the loadings that you're supposed to use for materials for design. But as I was studying engineering, I decided to appreciate loads because structures is all about loads and how you can support it using certain material or combination of materials. So if we talk about 10 kilonewtons, I know what 10 kilonewtons look like. If we talk about two, I know. So what is, I was designing the, the impulse load was 0 0.75 kilonewton per meter square. And I was like, wow, what will make the roof? Because I'm looking in my environment as a Ghanaian roofing sheet with timber members sitting on a, a beam. And I have a roof that has 75 kg per meter square. So I was thinking, but interestingly, further investigation showed that they had root snow load as part of the impulse load. But snow doesn't fall in Ghana, right? Uh -huh. So if I didn't appreciate loads and also think Ghana, I would have used the 0.75 to do the design. And you will know that there's snow inside. You wouldn't know that there's snow in the 0.75. Now, what am I saying? So the point I'm making is that as much as we do in the architecture, 
our environment and the conditions that controls it play a significant uh, role. So what I'm going to do is to discuss some of these factors with you so that in your deliberation going forward, you might probably have some kind of solutions to it so that we can do better than what we've done in the past. Now, if you close your eyes, going back, looking at the past, I think if we close our eyes and we think about probably 50 years ago, where you used to live, and you open your eyes and think about where you are now, the difference that you see, we've got to ask ourselves, was it better 50 years ago than now, or is it better now than 50 years ago? I'm sure you have a fair idea where we are. It gives us an indication of what we're doing, whether we're doing something better than what our ancestors did, or we're doing worse. And you and I know what we're doing. So on that score, I tried to walk through your process over the years with respect to architecture. In fact, in Ghana, the architects suffer a lot. And I can, I can relate to that because I deal with architects on a daily basis. I've done that for so many years. Because in Ghana, everybody is a builder. Everybody builds his own house. The architects can go to the client and they'll tell you that, oh, me I don't wait for me, and immediately deflates you. And he doesn't even want to pay half of even the actual uh, uh, professional fees that you're supposed to charge. And that's a huge challenge. So what are some of these factors? Now, if you look at the architecture of the past, at least when I was growing up, uh, we used to live in uh, Takra, the beach road. Fantastic area, road layout, bungalows with greens, trees. And I go there now and I look at it and everything is gone. But you still have new buildings coming up with different architecture, South Africa, Europe, America, all boxed up. So you ask yourself what it is that we are doing. Now when you come to even Accra and you look at a Salam Down area in the early 70s, you see that the architecture is of a certain kind. Asbestos roofing on a little bit of concrete with casement windows, glass windows, and a compound garage for the elite. Then coming to the 70s, the architecture changed to like buildings in Jowlu. You have this uh, concrete fascia with hidden roof with terrazzo around the building with the frontage sliding glass. That's the first time uh, sliding glass became popular. And inside you have wall-to-wall -wall carpets in most of the residential building. Not talking about institutional buildings in the past. Almost all the secondary schools we went to had fantastic designs. If you look at University of Ghana from air, from the air, fantastic designs. Fast forward to the present. Same as and USD. Thank you very much, <laughs> Mr. D. <laughs> Fast forward to the present. And we realize that we have a huge challenge. Now, what is the difference between what was happening before and now? So my first factor that I think we need to look at is the land use and spatial planning. From where I sit, because most of the time, the land is being given to us by the chiefs. And there is everybody wants to move quickly. We use the land without the necessary 
uh, collaboration with the necessary institutions. Because the site plan you're looking at doesn't have any contours, nothing on it. And most of the time, we design and you go to the site and sometimes you realize that the land is even smaller than the, the, the design. You have to go back and go and change. It happens to you all the time, if you admit. But there's a certain trend that is happening. And I just want to speak on it a little bit. The infrastructure that we have. Now, we are building in areas, one, where we have infrastructure and where there is no infrastructure. If I say infrastructure, we have areas that are existing that we have electricity, water, drainage, and engineered roads. And we're building in these areas. Even though we're building in these areas, the capacity of the infrastructure there is taking new capacity of structures, which is far bigger than what it can take. But we're still we're doing that because we've not done new infrastructure for those areas. We're using the old one. Example is the cantonment area. You see that the old gutters are still the same old gutters, but yet we're doing magnificent structures that still the old small gutters are the ones playing the role of the service. Then we have areas that you have 50% infrastructure. You have water, you have electricity, but no drainage, no engineered roads. And people build, and you're staying there. Most of us come to work up and down from areas like that. Then we have areas that there is no infrastructure, but we're still building there and people are staying there. Then the fourth is we have areas that we are not even supposed to build there at all. And yet, people are building there. So this is the challenge. And all these buildings, some of them, I'm, I'm, I will say it's all, are being designed by architects and being engineered by engineers. So we've got to pause and ask ourselves, what are we doing? Now, I want to move on to the next factor, which I think the minister also hinted on, construction materials. The availability of construction material on the market affects your designs sometimes, and even for us engineers. Sometimes we design with 16 mm bars diameter, 12 mm bars diameter, 20 mm bars diameter, but that's not what is on the market. The market has less than that. The specification on the strength, less than that. And yet, that is what we have. And I think God has been so good to us, and we normally have only flood disasters. We don't have earthquake kind of disasters. So I think we should be smart enough to deal with the flood so that we'll be fine. Because if earthquake disasters come, we'll be very hot. Then we have um, my third point is on technology in the design. I think we've been blessed before. I think we were doing rapinograph and ammonia sheet that is being folded. Sometimes you go to places, you're asking for drawings. We were doing some work around the harbor area. We asked for drawings and the ammonia drawings they brought. You could see fantastic design but it's not been preserved. Transferring it onto the new technology has been a problem. But we have moved on. We've come into AutoCAD, come into BMI, BI, BIM. We're moving on. And I think this is very, very important because most of the projects that we are doing, <laughs> you'll agree with me, the clients want it like yesterday. And you can't, be, you can't be living on one project to run your office. You have to be doing multiple projects. So technology is something that we have to look at and try to make sure that all of us are in that lake and we're using something that 
all of us can relate to, so that as an association, we're moving in a certain uh, direction to solve our problems. If we look at going into the future, we're looking at 3D printing and all that kind of um, facilities that will aid our profession. Now, when it comes to this factor four, collaboration with built environment professionals. As an architect, you don't work in isolation, but at least you are the first call for the client. You do your brief with clients, get your sketch designs, impress the client, then the client say, go. Then you come and see us in the built environment, the other professionals, and sometimes the client is unhappy because they think that the architect does everything. And you've got to bring more people to come and take my money. <laughs> but I think it's important we collaborate with each other with respect to both residential, institutional, and I think infrastructure projects. I'll come to that. The collaboration helps a lot because sometimes by the time you call us in, the impression you've given the client, when we make our input, it changes. And now you have to go to convince the client to be able to take the new stuff. So for instance, sometimes some of the challenges we have, especially with respect to structures, is that sometimes you have some three, four story building and a particular architect still wants the columns to be 150 by 150. And we'll tell you, 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 you can't do that with pro probably about five meters span. So when we come in early, we are able to help so that your sketch and impression designs to the client will fit for purpose. Then also we have um, the issue of soil investigations. Two story, three story, it's mandatory you do soil investigations. But sometimes you have drawings coming to you and there are no soil investigations for that. And talking about soil investigations, going back to the, the different terrain that we have with respect to in infrastructure, you realize that we need permit to start building. So I ask myself, where there is infrastructure on the ground, is the permit the same thing as where there is no infrastructure on the ground? In other words, where is your wastewater, kitchen water going to? Where is your uh, bathroom water going to? Is this the two, is it the same? So if I'm getting a permit for an area that I don't have drainage and engineered road, how, how is the permit, permit uh, uh, certificate? How is it different? I think something we have to think about it because it's happening. So we can't say that, no, you have to get permit before you build. The people are building, it's, it's going. And if the place is clay, how do you even do a soak away? If you have latritic soils, you're good to go to do some kind of soak away. But if it's clay, you're stuck. So these are things that we, in our maybe sessions, we have to be thinking about having a way of um, dealing with them. And I also want to talk about the um, seismic. In the past, most of the designs we did were what we call gravity loads. Now, we're doing seismic. And if you look at the map of Ghana, the seismic increases from the south, to it decreases from the south to the north. So when you're at the south, it's high. When you're at the north, it's low, probably zero. So if architects are designing, they need to consider the areas that they are designing and also the shape of the structure. The more irregular your structure is, the more it attracts the earthquake forces. So if your structure is regular, you're able to take care of seismic effects. Your engineers will be comfortable doing nice things for you. The next factor, I want to also speak on is on the procurement method. 
in the past, we used to do uh, FedEx Red Book, where the client calls the architect, they design, they do what we call engineers estimate, and they procure the go tender for contractor to bid, then that's it. You you, if you're lucky, you become the supervising consultant and you're on the project. Now things have changed. We're not doing much red book unless for residential. Institutional projects and infrastructure projects are all moving towards yellow book, which is design and build. And per the local content, there should be uh, a design reviewer who is local. Now, how, how do the architect review another architect's uh, uh, design? What's the procedure? Because the concept and the style might be different from person to person. So how, how do you do that? And unfortunately, most of the corporate organization are also understanding design and build because of cost, and they're moving towards that angle. So this is something we have to be thinking about. So tomorrow, architect A is with the contractor. They've done a design. They budgeted for it. and. It's about to kick off, and the local design reviewer comes in, and he says, I don't, this is not that, that is not that, that is not that. To solve some of these things, most of the institutions have what we call employer's requirements. That they go by. So we need to marry these in going forward, the projects that we are looking at, because this is what the current situation is. Then I have a problem with the architects. It looks as if the infrastructure projects like the flyovers and the bridges and the um, uh, uh, roads, architects are not part of it. It's only we civil engineers, and we do the hard concrete areas and things, and we go. And for instance, you have a flyover, and under the flyover there's nothing, and people start going to put kiosk and things there. I'm thinking architects should be part of it so that you bring your innovation to design that place to be lively like what we see outside that all of us love. I think we can do that here. You have the capacity to do it. And I think we should look into that. And for instance, if you look at the character of our roads, if you're driving anywhere in Ghana, whether Sunyani, whether Accra, whether you look at the left and right of the road, it is kiosk, a pump -pum store, um, a container shop, this different colors, signboard, and this. Is that the character that we have? I think architects should look at it, and I'm happy the minister is here. He said we can collaborate with him, with his ministry, and we can do designs for left and right of the roads that these people can use. These people are, they are doing a trade that we all, we all buy. We buy the plantain, we buy the corn, we buy from them, and they're supposed to have a place to ply their trade. We need to design something for them. Plantain, roasting plantain, and uh, roasting corn is not done in Europe. And so when you go to Europe, you don't see that. But when you come here, it is there. The CEO buys some. So we need to design for them, and we can patronize it and still make our environment nice and clean. <laughs> the other issue the factor I also want to talk about is that because you're dealing with the build environment professionals and most of the time you are the lead consultants, I think it is important that we all establish the fact that we need contractual agreements to, to run the service that we are providing, where the fees and stuff are defined nicely and we build trust among each other because we have the capacity to be able to deliver. There are more projects that are coming. I look at this country and I'm like, look, I've, 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 I've worked for about 30 years 
And the highest building that I've designed is not even 20 story. So who is going to do the 40, 50 stories and things like that? Because Europe, America designs is going to come here whether we like it or not. But which people are going to do it? And do they have the capacity to? So these are things that we have to think about. So that brings me to capacity building. The engineers we are training, they come from USD, they come to our office, we are not doing anything because the projects have gone designed and built. And we don't have anything to train them. In other words, we're going back to slave trade. 50 years from now, Europe will come here to come and do the design and we will be the ball boys following them, even though we've done engineering in UK and USD. So this, these are things that I just want to blow your mind on. Then, project funding and financing. I think from the culture that we're coming from, from our bosses, we inherited from our bosses, we sit down and client comes to us to give us project. Then we, our professional skill, we start to exhibit it. Now it's no more like that. Client is looking for people who can find money and come and solve my problem for me with this building. I have this investment, I'll be paying us at when. But it looks like we are still sitting down waiting for client to call us. I think as architects and built professionals, we need to collaborate and see how we can also bring money. Because sometimes you look at the person who has gone to source for funding and you believe, that, no, I know too much more than this guy. How was he able to get the funding? But we are interested in our design and our skill. But I think we can go further and collaborate and be able to also bring funding on projects. So on that score, I will last end by saying that we need continuing professional development. CPD for all our associations and institutions. Ghana Institute of Architects, Institution of Engineers, Surveyors, Planners. It looks as if from the past, everybody has been managing his own affairs in his own corner. I think it's time we come together because when a project drops, somehow we come together and we are doing it. But when the project finishes, then we come to our association and come and talk about only ourselves. I think it is important these associations, the president for that matter, probably meet once or twice in a year to discuss all the common issues that affect the built environment so that we can change things going uh, forward. And some of the things we can do is the CPD, where seminars and things can be held. We need to, the engineers need to know about what the architect is thinking. Why do you do this? And we can't do this. Otherwise, we will give you the concrete and that's it. We don't care the style. You need to teach us that, no, we need that. We also have to teach you about earthquake and spans and size of columns. This can be done in small, small seminars and I think we can make fantastic progress when we do that. So on that score, Mr. President, it is evident that the land use and poor spatial planning has made it difficult for the average Ghanaian to derive the full benefits that architecture provides. We are here today to make sure that we want to solve this problem. And I'm very happy that your sessions that you're going to have has made adequate provision to solve this problem. Thank you very much and God bless you. Wow. Another round of applause for our speaker. Very informative and thought-provoking. I won't even try to summarize. I'm sure it will be the subject of discussion beyond the AGM. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, We'll take this uh, time to see of our honorable uh, minister. We say a very big thank you to him uh, for having time to come to our AGM. Shall we be on our feet as we uh, see him off? 
But uh, we'll be back with the collaboration. It's something we've penned down, so you'll be seeing us shortly. All right. Yes, very informative and uh, thought-provoking. Um, what actually caught my eye is on uh, collaborations, and I'm, I, I've, I'm sure the Honorable Minister will be waiting for us, because we really need that collaboration, first amongst ourselves and then with the ministry. I'm glad our speaker um, spoke about being comfortable here, because he's already collaborated with us, and that's a very good score. On that note, we would welcome uh, goodwill messages from our sister institutions, um, starting with the Ghana Institution of Engineers. We will invite Engineer Kwabna Bimpong, President-elect, to bring us his goodwill message. Shall we welcome him with a round of applause? Thank you very much. Well, I would like to stand on the existing protocols and to thank you very much for inviting us to deliver this goodwill message. I know this is something that we have done together in the past. You come to our AGM and annual conferences, you deliver very good messages, and we are privileged to be here this afternoon. I bring you greetings from our president, who was supposed to have been here, but it looks like the dates missed him. They were talking about coming here tomorrow, and he is a professor in the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, and therefore, just last night, it was about 8 p.m., I was called that I had to represent him. And I said, why not? Because um, this year and last year had been the time for the Spartans. You know who the Spartans are? You don't? Well, how come? Independence Hall. And we are reigning. This gentleman was my classmate, and also in Independence Hall. I'm talking about VIA in civil engineering. The president, SM Korte, architect SM Korte, was also in this hall. Ah, many, many more. <laughs> is it Kolo, but we are leading. <laughs> when you go to our institution also, the president, current president, engineer professor, Reverend Charles Adams, is also a product of Independence Hall. We all seem to be around, you know, the same time. So it will tell you that Independence Hall is raining, and therefore, knowing that SM Korte is the president of the AG, that is the Ghana Institute of Architects. There was no way I was going to miss it. So I bring you greetings from our president, the ESCO, that is the Executive Council of the Ghana Institution of Engineering, the council, and the entire membership of our institution. As part of members of the built environment, we see ourselves as partners, and today we are talking about collaboration. And as the incoming president, you can be sure I'll be waiting for your um, president-elect, I guess he's going to be the president. You have to do wait for another year, as in our case where we wait for two years. But then we would seek to collaborate, because in my year, I, my theme is going to be more on the built environment, and especially on uh, buildings, because we've always been talking about infrastructure, uh, transportation, electricity, and all those things. I would want to concentrate, you know, on uh, providing for uh, people. But then I would want us to be guided also by the recent happenings. The flooding issue, we've always talked about finding solutions, and as you go back, you realize that we, Accra has been flooding not only Accra, but then we've been having floods over many years, and we seem not to be getting the solution. What it means is that we need to be guided by the world order in terms of climate change. Yes, the solutions are there, but then we should be guided. So in all our solutions, now we don't just build for 
your clients, you are building for stakeholders. And the stakeholders include even those within the community, those bystanders, those who walk you know, along the street. Because when you build and it's nice, everybody takes ownership. When you are going somewhere, you say, oh, when you get to uh, this building, you turn right. And he wants everybody to know that he lives in that area. I happen to be the resident engineer for the uh, Pocahontas Interchange Project, and I lived in that area. So I remember any time I had opportunity to speak, I said, I have a vested interest in that building, sorry, in that uh, infrastructure or piece of infrastructure. We also need to build sustainably, and resilience should be something that should be part of the DNA of our projects. Obviously, we want to build economically, and that is what the uh, minister said. If we are building with our local materials, then obviously it reduces the cost of our projects. Engineer Vela also did mention, and I just want to reiterate that, that we need to involve the, I was going to say engineers, but not only the engineers, all of us in the built environment, right from the inception, even when you begin thinking about the project, please invite us to the table. We are not going to charge for that. At times we make so many changes, and those changes are more expensive than when we are with you right from the beginning, through the pre-contract stage, all through to the post-contract and even the maintenance so that we can bring to bear the knowledge and the, the experience that we have in coming out with projects, especially when, because sometimes, oh, this is my concept, this is what I have dreamed about. A lot of the time, remember that you may be dreaming some skyscrapers in the air or in, in, in space, but at the end of the day, it has to be on the ground. And, um, I was going to say that we control the ground, but uh, please let us collaborate in that way. I wish you a fruitful conference. Well, you call it annual general meeting, but I believe that it's also a conference and that the outcome of your deliberations will bring value to architects and stakeholders in general and this nation. God richly bless you. Thank you very much, architect uh, Bimpong, president-elect. <laughs> OK, thank you very much. Right, looks like our message from our partners is more on collaboration, so we'll be looking to it as we proceed. Um, we'll now be calling on the Ghana Institution of Surveyors to bring us their goodwill message. If she's here, um, President Rose Margaret. Yes. So, please welcome her with a round of applause. I'm sure she's also from Independence Hall. Good afternoon, everyone. And a very good afternoon to all our senior architects and your council. It's a joy to be here. On behalf of the Ghana Institution of Surveyors, we wish you all the best for your conference and AGM this week. We want to just say that we always are happy when we work with the architects, and it's a joy working with you. Sometimes what we like to look at is when you design, you design lovely buildings. But we want to look at buildability and also the cost. So as we want to look into the future of architecture, especially in Ghana, just think of some of those areas and then I'm sure we will get very unique and iconic buildings but that are buildable, sustainable for all of us to enjoy. And then when we look around our landscape, We'll be proud that this is our country, and we do have the capacity to be able to do what it is that we have locally, because we are capable. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, madam. 
with your collaboration will have the availability and sustainability as is desired. Um, do we have a rep from the Ghana Institute of Planners? One Esubonting. We have Mr. Esubonting around. Okay. Then um, we'll move to the Academy of Arts and Science. Do you have any rep from the Arts and Science Academy? Okay. Let's welcome our own Prof. H.N.A. Wellington. Thank you very much. I'm here on behalf of the Ghana, Institu Ghana uh, uh, Academy of Arts and Sciences. Uh, I'm also an architect, as you know. But as I've been saying since I became a member of the uh, ARC board, I am very much concerned about heritage. Heritage in terms of what our forefathers created for us to make us Ghanaians, for us to continue to remain as Ghanaians as we take our position in the world. We have something which we can offer for the advancement of the cultures of the world. And we can do that if we remain conscious of what we have had in the past. Ghana is a very unique country. There's no doubt about that. It was mentioned much earlier this morning that we have the center of the world in Ghana. That is not only geographical, but also spiritual and also philosophical. If we have that position, then the world expects us to make a significant contribution. So coming from the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, the message I bring is that the Ghana Institute of Architects has a very unique role to play, and that should not be lost on us. What should be that uniqueness? Should be in what you are as human beings, as Ghanaians, and as architects. So on this occasion, I wish you a very fruitful and useful deliberations. God bless you. God bless you too, Professor Wellington. Your passion for conservation is rightfully placed because we, all, we all look up to you also as a body of knowledge in the profession with so many years of experience. Yes. And we now welcome a good message from Interior Designers and the Creators Association from President Delilah Mesa. Please welcome her with a round of applause. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for inviting us. Um, it's uh, not a coincidence that um, on the 28th is the World Interiors Day, and the same theme is the past, present, and future, which goes to show that we have to collaborate with architects. We have to um, work together with you, and we need your help in, um, uh, in carrying out the finishing touches to in all the buildings um, that we're putting up. So in this note, I thank you once again, and I con we congratulate you on the, co the occasion of your annual general meeting, and we hope that it will be successful. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, madam. Yes, the request for collaboration will be duly met. Um, do we have any students from Kenya University or Central University here for their goodwill message? Okay. In the absence of that, uh, we call on the rep from the Ghana Standards Authority, Mr. Clifford Frimpong. Okay. Please welcome with a round of applause. All right. Thank you and good afternoon to all. I'm here on behalf of Professor Alex Dodu, who unfortunately is outside the country, and he has asked me to represent him. And I'm glad I feel like I'm at home. I've met my longtime friend since 1987. We've not met again. Dr. Manuel we all finished Upokuare the same year. <laughs> all right. And I think everything that is happening here is bringing all of us together. As Standards Authority, we don't work alone. We are only a focal point to just bring all other agencies, institutions together. I was glad when the minister mentioned about the building code. If you have a code and there is no regulation to move it, it is just like any dead body. And I think with the passage of that regulation, you will see your association thriving and Ghana moving to the direction that we expect to go. Let me mention another thing that I have also observed. You are with a, a doc a year, this falls in your side. There are so many people who are practicing and I don't know if they are being regulated. Why am I saying that? Somebody will build something, you will take measurements, you ask for maybe a door, a window, they come and face it and the spaces around it is like, <laughs> I wonder what is happening in Ghana. Precision quality is something I will also implore that you look up to so that together we can make Ghana a better place. Let me assure you that Ghana Standards Authority is ready to collaborate with you as others have said. We already have an MOU with the Institute of Engineers and we are looking at the building uh, industry and we can do the same with your institution also. Thank you and have a free free deliberation. Thank you too for your assurances and I believe in the spirit of collaboration We'll be seeing you working closely with the ARC, and uh, we'll be seeing a new regime of enforcement within our industry. Um, having had all our goodwill messages, we will now call on the Honorary Secretary of the GIA to declare the AGM open. Let's welcome architect Augustus Richardson. Mr. President, um, distinguished uh, council members, um, the board chair of the ARC, indeed the registrar of the ARC and deputy registrar here represented, uh, board members of the ARC who also attended, and indeed to the house uh, fellows and also members uh, of the institute um, and also our representatives from that and of course the guest speaker who has challenged us, and I think very apt. Also to the minister who has uh, departed us, we, we really value his uh, collaboration with the institute, and I also, because of my position, sit at the level of the ARC, and obviously we've seen the level of commitment he has to the built environment. Maybe government must continue to consider uh, looking at people who have backgrounds in the built environment to sit in that position of works and housing because of the level of commitment and concern that they bring with it. But uh, it, it is my singular pleasure to welcome you all uh, to this year's AGM. I, I see a lot of empty seats. I'm hoping that it's just a warmer today, but we look forward to the members participating uh, more strongly in the next two or three days of events that we'll be having. Uh, the program, which you have all received, I'm not going to go into it, but I'm very excited about uh, today and how it's gone, and I'm looking forward to tomorrow uh, where we really delve into the issues 
and the discussions and presentations of uh, distinguished architects to talk on the issues of the past of architecture, the present you know, uh, state of architecture, and what we must look to uh, accomplish in the future ahead of us. And I think it's very apt. I'm actually also very excited that when the interior designers were speaking, they mentioned that it seems to be in tandem. Indeed, you know that we have not uh, collaborated at all on this idea. So I think the, the zeitgeist is, is right, the spirit is right, and what we are trying to achieve uh, will be achieved. So tomorrow will be very exciting. Uh, on Friday, we would have the uh, proper AGM uh, where we will discuss issues concerning this institute. I would encourage a lot of our members um, uh, we have a platform that we chat on, and uh, that platform is where they speak a lot. I'm quite disappointed not to see some of those people here today. But I look forward to that participation on Friday, where we'll be looking at uh, modernizing our constitution, um, and some of these things that are really important in making sure that the institute will continue to grow from victory uh, to victory. Saturday, we would have our dinner. Um, I, our sponsors have been so gracious to sponsor the event. Um, uh, we've sent out tickets for sale, and we are still you know, receiving purchases of those tickets for dinner. Please uh, participate very strongly, because this is the only time that we uh, enjoy this. Do also note that this year marks 60 years of the Institute of Architects. In, in 2022, uh, from its establishment in 1962, um, there will be huge activities happening uh, during the World Architecture Month, which is uh, uh, October. So just to let you know. But with that said, uh, it is my singular honor to declare this uh, event and this AGM duly uh, uh, started and, and, and in progress. Thank you all very much for your time. Yes, another round of applause for our Honorary Secretary. Right, so um, we'll be taking some advertisements from our sponsors. Uh, we'd like to acknowledge them now. We have a Stone Depot as our platinum sponsor. We have um, X Interior Designs as our diamond sponsor. For our gold sponsor, we have DBS Industries Limited and also Geo Rita Limited. We also have Sika Chemicals Ghana Limited for our sponsors. Um, the IT man kindly uh, play their advertisements. Yeah, please uh, don't go yet. We have some refreshments for you after. Let's take these.
we say a big thank you to our sponsors for helping us to pull this through, and we'll be in collaboration with you, as that is the word of the day. So we keep going from strength to strength. Also soon, we've come to the end of today's uh, program, and we'll call on architect Achu Amenyo to give us the vote of thanks. Let's welcome with a round of applause. All right, thank you very much. And I was not expecting this, though, but I would like to use the opportunity to thank all invited guests, our main speaker, the minister that also came to grace the opportunity with his uh, thought, uh, provoking thoughts, and everybody that came here, we are grateful. We have two more days going, and we pray that we all participate fully to make our AGM a big success. Thank you for coming, and God bless us all. Yes, God bless us all. Um, on that score, I call on architect Sena Gidigasu to give us the closing prayer. Let's welcome with a round of applause. Yeah. Let us be upstanding. Our Lord and Master Jesus, we thank you for taking us through to this program. We thank you for the ideas that we have shared. We thank you that everything went on successfully and smoothly. We thank you that you take us throughout the rest of the program tomorrow and Thursday, tomorrow, Friday, and Saturday. We thank you that at the end of it all, we'll give you praise and glory. For that you have been with us at this AGM 2022. There's many other things we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, please don't rush out. Let's start a collaboration here. Say hello to someone you haven't spoken to before. And we have some refreshments in the uh, forecourt, so kindly take something before you leave. And see you all in the following days. Um, kindly visit the stands uh, outside for the sponsors so you see the marvelous products that they have for us. Thank you.